Okay. So the autolymph organs has two organs. One is your saccule and the other one is the utricle. Just like we said, we had a uh, tectorial membrane, organ of corte, all those things. We have similar uh, understanding in the otolith organs also. We had ampulla, we had cupula, we had criste in the semicircular canal, but we will have your uh, otolith membrane, you will have otoconia and macula in the otolith organs, saccule and utricle. The otolith membrane is like tectorial membrane, which means the hair cells will go, uh, the stereocilia go connect with the otolith membrane. The stereocilia of the otolith organs will go insert into the tectorial uh, otolith membrane. Okay. And the macula is like the basilar membrane, which means the macula holds the hair cells. Okay, now we can see the macula is actually holding the hair cells together. Okay, it acts like a basilar membrane. The hair cells sit on the macula. Okay, then the stereocilia go insert into the otolith membrane. Again, the otolith membrane is jelly like substance, it is a gelatinous substance. Okay, and then you have calcium carbonate crystals on top of it. You have crystals which is uh, uh, the chemical composition of it is calcium carbonate. Why do we have this? This acts as a mass to provide, you know, we need gravity to work on this, okay? The semicircular canal is actually for the angular motion, okay? And the otolith organs is for the linear motion, okay? So uh, the calcium carbonate crystals, has to do with your gravity. That's why we have that now. Okay, so this is a picture from the electron microscope on about the calcium carbonate crystals. What is there on the otolith membrane? The autoconia, it's called as autoconia. This is the closest zoom view of the autoconia. Fine. So this is a very good picture, which explains how the hair cells go project into the otolithic membrane and uh, how the otoconial crystals are sitting on top of the otolith membrane. Again, the hair cells of the semicircular canal and the uh, otolith organs are same. They have type one and type two fibers. They have kinocilium in the uh, as the tallest stereocilia. Okay, fine. Now we are looking at the orientation of the hair cells. If you look at the saccule, the saccule is responsible for top and down movement. In the semicircular canal, we saw the horizontal is for the right and left, and the anterior is for the front and back, and then your uh, posterior canal is for your moving, rolling, which means tilting right and left. Likewise, the saccule is for detecting the motion up and down, and the utricle is for front and back or in the horizontal plane, moving right, moving left, all these things. It has four motions, front, back, moving front, moving back, and then moving sideways. Utricle is responsible for detecting all these things, and the saccule is for the up and down, okay? The A is actually, again, the same picture which we have seen already. And what happens when we bend forward, okay? When we bend forward, there is no angular motion actually, because we are not rotating the head, we are just bending it. The head is constant. We are just bending, which means there is a movement, horizontal movement according to the utricle. So what happens? Because the autoconia has mass, it will be pulled by the gravity. It is going to pull downwards, okay? Because of which, as I told you, when the lowest, the smallest stereocilia falls on the tallest one, okay? It will 
excite the nerve fiber. Okay, so here the excitation is happening. Clear? The downward is the orientation of it. In the cupola, it is only in one direction. Okay, the hair cell in our organ of corti, the hearing hair cells, again are in the same one direction. It is like standing. That's it. The whole of the cochlea is in the same direction. But in the in your uh, vestibular system also, it is in the same direction. But it is not the case when it is utricle because utricular movement is on four sides. So any side the patient moves, any, any side the subject moves, the utricle has to detect the linear motion. Okay. So the hair cells are arranged in all the directions. The arrow marks which you're seeing on the C diagram, it's actually how the hair cell is directing towards it, which means how the stereocilia are standing. Okay. So this is your macula. Okay. So the hair cell will not be standing just like this. It will be pointing. You have this. Let's keep like this. This is the smallest stereocilia. This is the tallest stereo stereocilia. Okay. Imagine if I'm going to move this way. Okay. If I'm going to move from my to, to my this side, if I move like this, this will fall. This will close, right? Uh, if it's falling like this, the smallest one falls on the tallest one. Okay which means excitation, right? When it is falling, like when I'm moving towards the right side, to my right side, the tallest one will fall on the shortest one, right? So what happens? Inhibition, okay? Just like how the semicircular canal used to send excitatory from one side and inhibitory from the other side, we have uh, otolith organs, the saccule and the utricle, which is also sending inhibitory and excitatory responses. Okay, if one cell is sending excitatory responses, the other hair cell, which is oriented on the opposite side, okay, imagine there are two hair cells. As I told you, there are hair cells which is directing in all the directions. One is like this, the other one is like this. Okay, so what happens when I'm moving from right to left, this smallest one will fall like this. So this hair cell is going to send excitatory response. And here you have like this. So this will move like this. So the tallest one is falling on the shortest one. So it will send inhibitory responses. So the same direction of movement is going to send inhibitory as well as excitatory responses to the brain. Okay. The same happens with the saccule. Okay. Saccule, you have directions from two sides. Okay. If the person is going up, Okay, one hair cell will be excited and another, another hair cell which is pointing towards downwards, it will be inhibitory in response. Okay, so you have responses coming from the same saccule and neutral. Is it clear? Any doubts? In the semicircular canals, we had the hair cells sitting on it. Okay, there is no a particular direction to it. Okay, it's just the direction of the cupola that decides it is to be excited or it is to be inhibited. Okay, if it is towards the utricle, it will excite. If it's away from the utricle, it will inhibit response. Okay, but in the saccule and the utricle, the hair cells are not in the same direction. It is in different directions. Because, why? Because I will be moving in all the directions. Okay. Uh, the saccule is responsible for up and down movement. Okay. Which means if you're going in a lift, the lift goes up, which detects it. Saccule detects the movement in the lift. If you're going on a car, okay, what detects it? Utricle. Okay, this is linear motion. This is same flat. The angular motion is turning. Okay, linear motion is 
without turning, keeping your head straight, what movements can you make? You can directly go front, you can come back, you can go towards the left, you can go towards the right, and you can go up and down. You have eight ways of moving, eight or six ways of moving, four in the horizontal, two in the vertical, okay? So if there is any linear motion like this, the cycle and the utricle sense response, okay? Now, I will be moving in all the directions. Imagine there is only one hair cell, okay? Let me switch on the video. Okay, so imagine we have a hair cell like this, which is to pointing towards this direction, okay? My right and left direction, okay? If I'm moving towards my left side, okay, it's going to excite. If I'm going towards the right side, it's going to inhibit. Okay, what happens if I go front and back? Will, will this be affected? If I go front and back, there is nothing affected. So I need hair cells, which is oriented like this. Okay, so I need something like this, as well as something like this. This will, uh, you know, it will uh, detect movement on the front and back and I need other hair cells which is oriented in a different way from right and left movement. Okay, that's what it is said in the diagram. So you have this which is directed towards one side and you have another which is directed inwards. Okay, this line of separation of the hair cell orientation in the saccule, uh, in the saccule as well as utricle, it is called as triola. Okay, this is called as striola. Fine. Is it clear now? Video is not visible. I stop the video. Uh, Naren, can you explain me what crystals are directly placed over the reticular membrane? Uh, no, it is called as otolith membrane. The crystals are sitting on the otolith membrane because it is like, you know, it's sticking to the otolith membrane. Okay, it, it is giving weight to the otolith membrane. If there is only the gelatinous substance, this uh, gravity is not enough to pull this. Okay, that's why we, ha we have calcium carbonate crystals sitting on the otolith membrane so that it adds weight to it. So if there is a movement, then this will lag behind okay for example if i bend what happened the autoconia pulled the membrane downwards because of which there was an exciting okay imagine if i don't move all if i'm just moving in a straight direction what will happen because there is a mass okay then the mass will stay what happens the hair cell will move we have inertia okay how did the cupola change in the opposite direction, right? The, the opposite direction to the movement. Likewise, the autolith membrane also moves in the opposite direction. So one will be in excitatory, the other one will be in the 